Hello, my name is Tony Roten, and this message is for to help you become your best. It's a fabulous day, as always. It's because I went out this morning, and I'm looking in my garden, and my carrots are coming up, my peas are coming up, my onions have already been up, the, I've seen potatoes that are coming up now. <laughs> it's just so awesome. I love this time of year because it's always a fresh start. You never know what's going to come back without you doing anything. You never know what's going to come back that's new. You, I mean, I've got flowers now that I have no idea where they came from that are popping up. I'm like, okay, well, check these out, see what that's like, see what, if I want to keep them or not. Anyways, that's uh, why I think it's a fantastic day. I am so excited to come to you to always share this message with you. I never know exactly what the message is until I get in front of the camera. And I think the message that really I want to talk about today is hate. Our country right now, here in the United States, is completely, I mean, we are becoming more and more divided than any time in history that I can think of, at least since my, since I've been alive. And what's interesting is there's some people that if you don't believe or think or act a way that they want you to act, then you hate them. That you can't have different thoughts, you can't have differing opinions. And this is so ironic when that's what this country was founded on, was the ability to be able to share your own thoughts, your own beliefs, and to be one still, to be one together. And I thought about a movie that we just watched recently. It's called The Miracle. It's a Disney movie about a hockey, the 80 Olympics hockey team that was facing off against the Russians. The Russians were dominating. Nobody could beat them. Nobody would even get close to them. It was always a slaughter fest for them. They, they walked into the arena knowing they would win. Their confidence was so high that it actually caused the other people, the other team, to kind of shrink and to just already give up. And I, I see that today, that sometimes because something's harder or something's more challenging, or somebody comes in just really gung-ho and facing you, that we shrink, that we almost want to give up. I had a coach. Man, he was brutal. He was a brutal coach. And at first when you're watching this and you think, man, this guy's a jerk, they tied against Norway. And it's one that the coach felt they should have won. But what was interesting is as they were sitting there, and on the bench, and they're watching, waiting for them to be called out. The coach was just kind of listening. And several of the different players were like pointing at the girls in the stand and saying, Oh, yeah, look at that one right there. She's, she, yeah. And they're doing all these kind of whisperings, and they're not really paying attention to the game. And the coach kind of shifts his, his focus over to this other side. And you can hear that. You know, they're talking about something else that is also not part of the game. Well, you could tell that his, his mind was stewing. And when they tied, he told the assistant coach, he said, tell him to get on the ice. And before all of this, he told him, I'm not your friend. I'm not your family. I'm your coach. If you want a friend you go to the assistant coach. And you're just like, wow, what a jerk. This guy is, man, he's mean, he's not being kind, he's not considerate, he's not showing love and compassion. I mean, you just think this guy is the bane of existence. But he knew what it, he had to do to get this team to be able to win the Olympics. So they go, and after this game, so they had just been playing for 
a long time. They get back on the ice and they have to do what they call lines. And you, you start at one end of the, the ice hockey field. And for basketball, it's called ladders. And so I don't know exactly what they called it in hockey. But they run to the blue line and then they run back. Then they go to the red line and back. And then they go all the way down and back. And they kept doing this and they kept doing this. And they did this for hours. Up to the point where even the caretaker of the facility turned out the lights on them. And they were still going. And they were just so exhausted. Just exhausted. And everybody starts packing up because the lights went out, so they assume they're going to go. And he says, what are you doing? We're not done here. And he tells the assistant coach, says, tell them to go. This whole time, the assistant coach is really struggling with his methods. With it, the, the other coach's name is Herb. With Herb's message. And Herb was just a brutal coach. But he was really struggling with him. And he would tell him, blow the whistle. And you'd see him hesitantly bring the whistle up to his mouth. And Herb would say it again, blow the whistle. Send him. And you would see the assistant coach blow it. And then kind of just shake his head and drop to his head down and just shake it. And be gone. I can't believe you're doing this. They just played a full game. I can't believe you're doing this. Well, this kept happening until the lights went out. And he told them, we're not done yet. Get back on that line. And then finally, one of the players hollers out his name. And the coach says, who do you play for? And he says, for the United States of America. And... Up to this point, every time they would ask who you play for, they would say Georgia Tech or Brown or, you know, all of these different colleges. And what he was trying to do was unify the team. They no longer play for these different locations. They play for the United States of America. And then he blows a whistle and says, we're done here. And he walks off. At this point, what was interesting is then it cuts back to the assistant coach. And you can see it click in his head what had just happened. Herb has been trying to unify this team so much the whole time. Because that's what you had to do to be able to beat them. You had to be in physically the best shape ever. Because the Russians, they were out they would outplay, outperform, out, they would just dominate every team. And so he knew that they had to be mentally strong, they had to be physically strong, and they had to be I mean, emotionally strong. They had to be strong. Well, it comes the time of the game. As they, as they get to the game, Herb's like wondering, you know, I've asked them, they're doing everything I've asked them to do, and we just don't match up. You have Mikhailovich, who you know, Matt doesn't match up with anybody on the team. I, I, I can't match anybody up. And is what he's telling this to his wife. And his wife says, well, don't say that tomorrow in your pep speech. Well, the, the day of the game comes. And he tells him, you know, we can win one game. So we may play them 10 times and they win nine. We just need to win one game. He says, this is the game we need to win. And the reason was, is because the whole nation, the world was watching and listening to these Olympics. They were waiting to see what would happen. The Russians dominated everything and they almost boycotted it. But then they said, we want to prove that we can win everywhere. It doesn't matter where we're at, we can still win. And so we will come to these games and we will beat you. So this is their mentality. And the Americans were the underdogs and they were seriously thinking, we're, we're going to get slaughtered. 
Three days before the Olympics, they play the Russians. And they do get slaughtered. Just wiped up, wiped clean. But then the day of the Olympics, when the coach said, all you need to do is win one game. This is the game. We could lose 9 out of 10, but we need to win this one. You're playing for not just you, but for the United States of America. We need to be unified. We need to be whole. We need to be strong. And then they go out on the, the ice. And the, the goalie, or the, the American goalie, he was phenomenal. I mean, he's like blocking shots right and left. And really, they are not able to get a shot on him. Well, then they finally score. And he's blocking again. And they score again. We score, they score, we score, we score. Then we get it, and we're tied. You could see on the Russian coach's face that the Russians could lose this. And you could see them starting to get worried. You can see them starting to question their ability. He pulled out his number one in the world goalkeeper because we scored on him twice. He could see that this was a difference. Well, comes down to where we score again, four to three, and the Americans win. It united the United States instantly like that. Well, when it comes to hate, and it comes to dislike, it comes to frustration, it comes to all of these different emotions that we allow to affect us, nobody else puts that in us. We put it in us. The more I realize that that's exactly like life. You know, we're going to go through challenges, especially if you have a goal that you really want to achieve. As you start to pursue that goal, as you start to go towards that goal, you're going to have challenges. You're going to be tested whether or not you equal that goal. Now, if you have a goal to be a business and to be in business for yourself, you're going to be tested to see, do you really have what it takes to get that goal? Is your vibration high enough to get that goal, to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve? You will be tested. Because we are not just given things unless we believe we can handle it, and unless the universe believes we can handle it, and which I believe is Heavenly Father believes you you can handle it. You don't just give a baby a hundred dollars and say, here you go, and and they know what they're going to do with it. They have to be taught. They have to be trained. They have to go through the process. And as they go through that process, that's when... They become the person they want to be and they should be. And that's when you achieve your goal. We need to stop hating. People will have different opinions than you. I may have differing opinions than you. But that doesn't mean I hate you. That doesn't mean I can't like you. That just means we have differing opinions. And if I allow hate to come into my life, If I allow hate to come into my heart, that's my problem. That's not somebody else's. I need to control my own emotions. I need to manage my own emotions. And we've talked about all kinds of exercises on how to do this. This even comes to our relationships and our families. Who is it right now that you may be struggling with? That you may say, quote unquote, I hate them. It's not worth it. It's not worth holding that emotion, which is damaging, which creates chemicals in your body that are damaging, that are making you sick, not somebody else, that are making you sick. It is not worth it. Love your neighbor. 
Love your family, your friends. Love them. Love the person on social media that says, yeah, oh, you're stupid. Love the person that says, that calls you all kinds of names. Because that's the most powerful weapon you can do is love. When you love somebody, you're able to look at it from a more compassionate way and say, oh man, I wonder what they're going through that causes them so much hate. What was their life like growing up that causes them to hate so much or to, to be so vile and so cruel? And that, that's a lesson that I'm teaching with my children right now. So I have a, a son who comes in and he says, man, this he points out this kid and he says, that kid, he's, he swears so much. He's so vile. He's crude. And I turned to Casey and I said, you know what? That really makes me sad. Because if he's like that here in school, I hate to see what his home life is like. Take the time to go out, share love, show love. Don't allow hate to enter your life. Don't allow these negative feelings to enter your life. And if they do, don't be like, oh, don't, I let it in my life. Just say, wow, I still got work to do. And you go and process that emotion. This isn't a one and done thing. This is an ongoing process that we need to be conscious and aware of to get rid of these negative emotions. You are amazing. Believe it. Have a fantastic day.